7.39. Time for the papers this morning. We'll start with the Mail on Sunday. Sir Keir Starmer does support the rail strikes, it claims. Uh, the Labour leader says he doesn't want to walk out, but a leaked document says he backs the union barons. The Sunday Telegraph reports on comments by the business secretary, Kwasi Kwarteng, that unions are bribing workers to strike. He said unions had been amassing a war chest for some time to fund a summer of chaos. Sunday Times has the Prime Minister saying, steal yourselves for a longer war. Allies have been urged to hold their nerve when it comes to aid for Ukraine. And the Sunday Express reports on the Attorney General's comments that it's time to take control of our borders. She said the British people, rather than European judges, should decide on who can and cannot stay in our country. Mm, interesting. It's got that European Court of Human Rights ruling. Really. Though the, the person who made that decision to sort of hold the flight may well have been a British judge. Yes. They're part of the system. Well, they're part of the European Court of Human Rights. So, yeah. Yeah. Which we set up after the war. Did. Nothing to do with the EU. No, nothing to do with the EU. Uh, it all gets very complicated. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Uh, let's go through the papers in a bit more detail then with the uh, journalist Abila Ramdani and the writer and commentator Benedict Spence. Morning, Morning to you again. both. We'll kick off with a bit of football, uh, should we? Or uh, sort of football, Nabila, in the star. Yes, was it the brown word? Kick off with football. Oh, uh, yeah, not a <laughs> deliberate one. <laughs> I know you're not terribly a football fan, are you? No. But this is um, far removed from football, actually. It's a story about the forthcoming World Cup, which warns that um, World Cup footy fans, hoping for a bit of extra time in the bedroom, are being warned that they might end up behind bars if they have sex outside marriage. And because the World Cup is taking place in Qatar, which is a Gulf state with very conservative uh, rules, um, the country is already saying that he will not relax its rules for British supporters. So, um, here's so if you're the one. planning on going out there with your partner to whom you're not married, you're, you're in a bit of trouble. I mean, can you even stay in the same hotel room? Well, potentially, that you know, that could be a problem as well. I mean, a night of passion could mean seven years in, in prison. Uh, so, do you think that's reasonable enough? I mean, it's their country, their rules. If you want to visit them to watch the football, mm. you should have abide by their rules. I well, know. I think that what this story is about is effectively a country that is not prepared to change its culture because it's holding, a, a, you know, a very um, one of the greatest uh, foot, foot, uh, sporting events, which is uh, the World Cup. And we can argue, of course, how society are uh, organised uh, all day, and, uh, and you know, w whether we're talking about Britain or America or indeed Qatar. But the bottom line is. The, the World Cup is being held in Qatar because it's a massively uh, rich uh, country and it's pouring multi-billion into the game and that's why it can effectively do what it's like. I mean, on paper, it, it's a very impactful story, but uh, effectively it's only stating the obvious, I'm afraid. Yes. And, you know, of course, um, you know, choosing an event like the World Cup is always a great opportunity to, uh, you know, put forward criticism because uh, it's the apt moment to do so. Uh, um, but uh, again, I mean, and I'm sure there'll be a lot more criticism about Qatar in the months leading up to the World Cup. But, you know, we can argue about human rights, and I think it's right and proper uh, to do so. Uh, but in the end, it's all about money, isn't it? I think uh, uh, football in particular um, involves a large amount of money and indeed a morality. And uh, I've seen the figures in relation to uh, Qatar. Uh, I mean, it, it, it multiplies, it's, it's immense wealth every second, it's very rich. In you can predict podcasts. there will be problems, can't you? Oh, there's a there, yeah. lot of footy fans going out there to watch the football and think they can behave the way they want to behave. Oh, yes. And you'll find that the Qataris don't like it. They don't, yeah, they're, they're not particularly famous for their tolerance of people misbehaving in public. And, um, you know, so I, I do think it's going to be, it's going to be a curious World Cup. I mean, I mean, they, they managed to hold one in Russia without there being a massive amount of problems, but I think the very fact that they held one in Russia, um, you know, before then having one in Qatar, um, I think kind of shows you what the real issue is. As Namila says, it's all about money, and football sold its soul a long time ago. And it, it's but they sort really of, did this time. I, I, well, I find it kind of amusing, actually, that, that we're getting all sort of het up about Qatar, given that, you know, 20 years ago, we did sell one of our biggest football clubs to somebody who was nicknamed uh, Putin's purse, because, you know, he's so deeply tied to, to the Russian state and you know Paris Saint-Germain are owned by the Qataris as well uh, you know it's it's a, it's an odd one for us in the UK in the Premier League which is all about you know money at almost any cost to start getting upset about this and the other we can get upset about these things but look 
football was for sale a long time ago and you have to sort of you reap what you sow tell us about uh, asylum seekers in the telegraph what's the take on this yes yeah, so this is the news that in the sort of the last 15 months the numbers of asylum seekers coming to the uk has jumped 60,000 in a year uh, with over 110,000 people currently awaiting uh, juxtaposed with the fact that only 15 applicants have actually been deported sent back failed their apl- their asylum applications and been sent back to safe countries none of them have gone to france incidentally right. uh, none of them have been people that sort of crossed in, in boats and then been sent back to france and i think that that's just an interesting way of sort of we've we've had the rwanda discussion this in this country for a couple of weeks now and i do think that we often sort of lose sight of, of the scale of the issue this is a massive mm-hmm. increase and it's not just in the uk i mean the um the eu border force has pointed out there's been an 82 percent increase increase in people coming into the UK, uh, in, into the EU in the last year. And it must be said, a lot of those people are coming from Iran, Iraq, but specifically Afghanistan. You know, this is getting lost a lot. You know, people are talking about you know, economic migrants and this and the other. There are a lot of those people, but an awful lot of them are coming from Afghanistan. And this, I think, is the flip side of Western countries sort of getting involved in, in other parts of the world and then going, well, it's too expensive, it's too difficult, we're going to have to pull back. There are consequences for that, and I think whilst it's all very well and fair to say that you know criminals need to be deported and there need to be sort of proper checks and balances and people coming in for economic migration, I think we've kind of slightly passed the buck on this side, specifically on Afghanistan. I'm more than happy to say that a lot of other people shouldn't come to the country, but Afghanistan was actually a more or less a functioning situation. It wasn't a great country, but we had propped it up, and then we withdrew. Well, there would be considered, I mean sort of uh, su- uh, suitable asylum yeah. applicants, wouldn't Well, they? this is the so thing. Is it's often framed as there are tens of thousands of economic migrants, and there are, and the government is actually, you know, as much as it likes to talk a tough game, it is actually quite keen for economic migrants to come into this country. We do have an ageing population. We need young working age people. But an awful lot of these people are coming as a result of a conflict that we essentially triggered by going in and then re-triggered when we withdrew unilaterally without setting up a viable alternative. But this is why, you know, we do need to have a serious conversation about it. Oh, it's so high, yeah. you wonder how on earth they can but, figure out what to do. I say, I mean, a lot of people use the, the argument that uh, all these migrants are con- coming for economic reasons, as if it was some kind of crime. As if that was yeah. wrong, yes. Y- you know, if you're... Um, Why shouldn't they want to improve their lives? ...devastated by war and, and indeed economic collapse, then of course you would want mm. your life, uh, you know, to be safe and, and, and you want protected. But it's and, how you come here. That's the yes, argument, but I think it? the West has a duty of care, especially when we're talking about countries like Britain, for example, which is a world power that has been intervening um, in numerous global countries, including in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Syria, to a certain extent, providing weapons, and now to a certain extent in the Ukraine. Uh, it is providing a safe passage for migrants coming from the Ukraine. Why can't they do the same well, for uh, people from uh, um, other this, this countries, is important. such as the Middle East and Central East? This is important because this is an 82% increase in migration into the EU, not taking Ukraine into account. That's over the last 12 months, not taking into account the fact that there are millions of people now in Eastern Europe, and it is predominantly Eastern Europe, they're not going to be coming to the UK because they want to stay uh, they in They want proximity. to go back. As they as want as to as go as back. As they want to be in a country that's close, uh, culturally or closer to what they're used to. But still, that's 82% before we take into account the fact that Russia has completely upended Eastern Europe. I guess the argument with Ukraine is uh, that these are people who are desperately wanting to get home as soon as possible, mm. which is a, a yes. situation. Can we have a look at Nabila at the Mail on Sunday? And um, I, I feel very sorry about this, President Biden falling off his bike, because it, it it's an open goal for those who want to criticise him. Is a 79-year-old on a bike and he fell off. We all fall off bikes every now and mm-hmm. then. So I, I've got a little bit of sympathy for him. Do we, though? I yes. think that the mayor's got it right, calling him Sleepy Joe. And, you know, the puns are just flying all over the articles. The wheels have come off. Uh, Joe Biden's popularity has been plunging fast. And the U.S. president took a literal tumble yesterday when he fell off his bike. Um, uh, He argued that he lost control after struggling to remove his shoes from the pedal toe cages. Well, if you actually look at the footage and the video uh, of the actual fall, uh, it, it looks like one of his foot is actually firmly grounded on the floor, so it's more a matter of an old man losing his balance and just falling off, I'm afraid. I mean, this was horribly but embarrassing. But he's 79. He's going kinda... to... Well, I think an interesting fact in America is that you can get full retirement benefits aged 67. So it makes me wonder, <laughs> and I've never understood why, you know, a massive country like America 
they're relying on OAPs to deliver the actual. I don't think uh, they're president. the only people who can who can drum up enough money to campaign. This well, is um, this is a wonderful case of um, life imitating art. I, I don't know if anybody remembers the, the West Wing. Wing the, the very first, first episode. episode, of course, yeah. it's all about a president yes. who has underlying health conditions falling off his bicycle. Yes, That's the whole episode. It's the very first episode of the West yeah. Wing. Yeah. Yeah. All those That's years ago. I mean, Biden is Otis turning eighty this year. Exactly. He's, he's turning eighty this year, and you know, it's not the first time he's fallen off. You know, he's tripped. To, uh, you know, on steps uh, uh, before. Uh, yeah, but there are cameras on him 24 7. No, but it's not just that. I mean, there are lots of examples where he looked disorientated and his speech is, is slurred. He doesn't quite know what he's saying. And you will ask any GP. And he'll tell you that these are clear signs of somebody who is not in full health. So he should certainly take some time off and, and literally <laughs> slow down. Take the summer off. Well, he won't be running for a second term, will he? No. Well, who knows? That's pretty, <laughs> who knows? Well, no, that that's, that's pretty well he said he wouldn't, no. but maybe he'll feel the need to. Who knows? But I mean, maybe he feels he's got a chance against Donald Trump. I suppose uh, it depends, depends who else decides I to do If Donald Trump stands, I don't know. I, I don't, don't know that he would. Do you know what I really fear? We were talking about this in, in the room back, at, at backstage. I think it'll be Clinton Trump, too. I really do fear that that's what's going to happen because Hillary Clinton is in the FT this weekend. They've she done an interview. She's been to she hasn't said, but she is. She's in the FT doing an interview. She's in the New Statesman doing an interview. She's doing the rounds. And again, I just think, do you know what? If tr she's probably thinking, if Trump's going to run again, why not me? Well, there I said Maybe. Trump is uh, him, himself is chomping, uh, you know, mm. at the bid for another run of the presidency. Oh, He's age seventy-six, but I have to say he looks far more sprightly than uh, Joe Biden. But it's a farcical situation, you know, <laughs> that we have OAPs running. It is farcical, yes, you know, it the, is. The, and you look at like a young, pre a young <laughs> president like Zelensky, who seems to be doing so well uh, at, at doing what's needed, at stepping up and looking as though he is strong and fit for the job. Mm. Yes, something like Pete, Pete Buttigieg. The Buttigieg versus DeSantis would be DeSantis. much more enlivening. But again, they've got to come up. With uh, one of the reasons, a lot of the reasons that people are suggesting that China and Russia are moving as they are, is because of a belief that the American political system is broken. Because you never know who it's going to be. It's going to be old men as well. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, such is life. Yeah. Um, Nabil, Benedict, we're going to leave it there. But it's good to see, you and we shall catch up a little bit later on. Thank, Thank you. you.